Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. If you haven't already seen one of our videos on this, this is our 8-bit infrared transmitter and 8-bit uh, infrared receiver board. And we're selling these as modules, fully built modules, and as kits. Now the cool thing about this is um, you, have to, you have to make the 8-bit address on the transmitter board the same as the 8-bit address on the receiver board or else uh, the receiver board decoder will not accept anything from the transmitter. And you can turn on and off relays. If you haven't seen a demonstration, check out uh, uh, the uh, details below and uh, there should be a link to the demonstration. Now, two days ago, I did the uh, assembly video for the infrared transmitter and now I'm going to do the assembly video for the infrared receiver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what, the, what comes with the kit, and we're going to put it together piece by piece. I'd like to take just a second to mention that the both the transmitter and receiver kits come in a sealed ESD bag. Let's talk about what comes with the kit. You got your printed circuit board, five diodes, your infrared receiver, five transistors, your power connector, your power plug, your decoder IC, socket, a pin dip switch, two red LEDs, uh, four five volt relays, a 10K resistor, four 470 ohm resistors, one 4.7K ohm resistor, one 47K ohm resistor, one 47 ohm resistor, one zero ohm resistor that actually measures around four ohms if you look on your um, multimeter, but that's because of your probes. So for all intents and purposes, let's consider it the four ohm resistor. It's got one single black line through it, easy to spot, it looks different than the others. Two 300 ohm resistors, your on off switch, three electrolytic capacitors, and four terminal blocks. Terminal blocks for the outputs of your relays. So, first of all, let's worry about putting our resistors in. Since there's more resistors than anything else, I'm going to go through with you and show you where each of them are. The board, on the board, they're labeled R1 through R11. I've labeled what each value is uh, on the right here. So R1 is a 47K ohm resistor, and that is right here. R2 is a 40 ohm, 47 ohm resistor, 47R, that's right here. Just to the right of R2 is R3, which is a 10K ohm resistor. R4 is right here, and that is a 4.7K ohm resistor. R5, R6, R7, and 8 are all 470 ohms. R9 is a 300 ohm resistor. R10 is also a 300 ohm resistor, and R11, which is located right in here, is our zero ohm resistor. However, it's if you're using a multimeter to measure, it might show you about four ohms because of your the resistance of your probes. But again, it's just a single odd-looking resistor with a black line through it. So place all of those resistors, and then we will do the capacitors. Easy step: C1, C9, and C2 are all electrolytic capacitors. C2 and C9 are 220 microfarad and C1 is a 10 microfarad. Now you'll notice each of these footprints has a plus sign. In this case on the bottom for C1 and for the case of C9 and C2 there's a plus sign on the right from this perspective of course. Now if you look at the capacitors there is a long lead and there's a short lead for each capacitor. For, all, for each of these capacitors, make sure that you place the longer lead into the side with the plus sign. If you, uh, that, because that is the positive side. The longer side of the electrolytic capacitor, the longer lead is your positive side. So make sure that they go into the positive slots. Don't reverse it or else they might pop. You don't want that to happen. So solder in those three capacitors and next we'll do our diodes. We're going to solder our diodes and our transistors at the same time here. There's five diodes and there's five transistors. The diodes D2, D1, D3, D4, and D7 down here are all the same. Now, if you actually see it, you can't probably can't see it from here, but the schematic symbol uh, for the diode is the triangle with a plus sign or a negative sign. Oh, sorry, on the end. Now that negative sign is your negative side, and the bottom of the triangle side is your positive side. Now if you look at the diode you probably can't see from here 
because it's so small, but there is a white side of the diode, or rather the side, one side of the diode has a white stripe around it, and one side of the diode is just plain black. The plus side of the diode, the anode of the diode, is black. And the white side, the anode, the negative, is white. Make sure that you line up the white stripes in the direct, on the uh, side with the minus sign on the footprint. Now, if this is a little bit ambiguous, you'll, it'll make more sense when you actually see the footprint. I know you don't get the greatest view here. So now onto our transistors. We've got five transistors. They're all the same. Q1, Q7, Q6, Q8, and Q9. Now on the footprint, there is a flat side of the footprint, and then there is a curved side. Now, if you actually look at the transistor, there's a flat side that has some writing on it telling you what the transistor name is, and there's also a rounded side. So from a bird's eye view, place the flat side of the transistor down into the footprint and make sure that it matches the flat side of the uh, footprint. So the flat side of the transistor should, from a bird's eye view, line up with the flat side of the footprint, and the curved side of the transistor should line up with the curved side of the footprint. Double check this before you solder because it's not fun to have to desolder these. And if you don't solder them correctly, if you solder them in the wrong orientation, your circuit's not going to work. So solder those all into place, and next we'll do our terminal blocks. Next we're going to wire up our terminal blocks. They go on the CON1, CON2, CON3, CON4 slots. Now you want to make sure that the output prongs, these little metal things, uh, are facing outwards, like I've done in this example. If you have them wired backwards or, or soldered in backwards, they're going to be facing these relays, and you're never going to be able to wire anything to that relay. So solder those four in with these prongs facing outwards. Be very careful not to reverse it. It's not fun desoldering these. In this step, we're going to do the two LEDs and the switch. Each of the LEDs has a long lead and a short lead. Like the diode, there's an anode and a cathode, anode being positive, cathode being negative. The longer lead is the anode, the positive. Long equals positive, like the capacitors. For the uh, LEDs, uh, they are placed in D6 and D5. Now, if you'll notice, uh, on each of these footprints, you might not be able to see it from there, but there is a little flat edge on one side and a rounded side. The flat-edged side indicates that that's the negative, and that's supposed to be where you place the shorter lead. And the curved side is where you place the positive lead. Now, for the switch, uh, there is, on one side there is uh, text, and on the other side there is none. Make sure that the text side, and double check this, faces the inside of the board, not the outside of the board. Text on the side faces the inside of the board, or else the on-off configuration will be reversed. In this step, we're going to do the dip switch, the infrared receiver, and the socket. Now let's start off with the socket. You might not be able to see very well, but on the left side of the U1 footprint, the microchip footprint, there is a little notch. And on the left side of the socket, there is a little notch. From a bird's eye view, when you're placing the socket into the footprint, make sure the lot notches are lined up. Because once that's soldered in, you're not going to be able to see the footprint anymore. And there's the notch on the IC that has to face, face this way. It has to face left. So you can match the uh, notch in the IC up to the notch on the socket. Fairly straightforward. The dip switch, I've actually placed it in there because you might notice that on the upper left there is an on indicator, on the upper right there is a YS indicator. You want to make sure that the numbers are on the bottom from this perspective and that the on indicator is on the upper left from this perspective. If you turn it upside down, uh, you're going to have it reversed uh, in regards to how the decoder sees it and uh, you might get confused with the orientation when comparing it to the uh, infrared uh, transmitter. So make sure that you set it up like this. Upper left, on, upper right, YS, and the numbers on the bottom from this perspective. Now lastly, we've got the infrared receiver. On the footprint, there is a curved front, and the receiver actually does have a little curve on the front. You might not be able to see it from there. But there's two pins on the left side, one pin on the right. And as you might notice, there's a difference in spacing on here. So what you want to do is you want to line it up from a bird's eye view to match it perfectly. It sits right in there, soldered down on the board. That's going to pick up your infrared signal. It's going to amplify it to a square wave, and then it's going to feed it to your decoder chip. So solder all that into place. We'll do our relays, we'll do our power plug, and then we will power it up. 
I've soldered the power plug in so I can show you the orientation. There is on the back side there is just a wall, a white wall. But on the front side there's actually a nice big indent. And the indent allows for you to plug in your connector. And your red wire should be on the on the right from this perspective, and your black wire should be on the left. So it was ma make very sure that you're not reversing this. Your f plus 5 volt source should be on the right, and your negative ground should be on the left. Now for the relays, there are five of them, and they only fit in one way. Three pins on, on this side, two pins on this side. Fits right in. So solder those in. I forgot to mention, make sure that the solder joints on the relays and the terminal blocks are very, very solid. That you really fill out the tin because these can potentially uh, switch on and off AC devices. So solder those in, into a uh, place and then we'll test it. We're all done. I've got my all my dip switches off on my receiver, all my dip switches off on my transmitter. Uh, I've got my on buttons or my on off buttons both turned set to on. I'm going to turn on my 5 volt source, so I'm going to power both of them 5 volts. It doesn't you don't have to be anywhere near this close, but just to show you everything interacting, I'll turn on the power. Both power LEDs turn on. You might have a hard time seeing the one on the receiver board, but it's on. Now when I transmit from the transmitter, when, it, when the receiver receives something, you'll see that LED turn on, and it'll stay on until I stop transmitting. So since I've got both the 8-bit address uh, set to zero 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 zero, so eight zeros on the receiver and eight zeros on the transmitter. I can I can communicate. So I'll press the S4 button on the transmitter. Listen for the relay to turn on or the relays to turn on. Great. So I'll press S2 or S3, S2, S1. So you can hear the relays working. So what if I change either the the eight bit address? And uh, decoding address and the encoding address on the tra on the transmitter. What if I change one bit on either one of these dip switches? The encoder is sending on a different 8-bit address than the receiver is looking for, so it won't communicate, which makes it pretty cool because you can set it up so that if you have your receiver box controlling a few AC devices, but um, you want to set it up to your own code. Uh, you know, you can have it hidden. You know, uh, you have to set the transmitter 8-bit address to the same address that the receiver is uh, receiving. I think that's pretty cool, myself. But, so now that we know it's working, um, we'll just turn it off. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a long video. If you want to see uh, uh, the instructable uh, video for the assembly of the transmitter, please just look at my channel. Uh, this will be available on eBay in just a day, a couple days. Uh, I still have to take pictures of it, get it up and running. But we've got voice recognition modules on the way, super capacitor flashlight kits, super capacitor charger kits, uh, easy RFID kits, standalone uh, RFID kits with four relays on them, uh, relay boards, uh, tr ultrasonic transmitters and receivers. We got tons of neat stuff coming, guys. So check us out uh, within the next couple months, and we'll have tons of new stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone.